It's 12.40 a.m. on technically day 63. And we got a pit. This is a head. Poke it out of the egg. Right in there. Let's take a look. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. You might just be the most beautiful thing. Oh, hello. I don't want to touch you, but I want to say hi. Welcome. Welcome to the world. Vela, you are a mom. Huh? How cool is that? You ready for motherhood? Oh, I see. Shrinking away from your responsibility. She's moving out of the egg. So excited. Totally nerd now right now. Parthenogenesis. I didn't want to be too presumptive, but I do already have the the terrarium set up and ready to go for these guys. Okay. As soon as the next one pips, we will document that as well. Nine fifty one AM July nineteenth. So technically the same day, and I get to then say that they both hatched on the same day. The second one has just pipped. I would say we we haven't crossed the finish line, but we are currently crossing the finish line. Let's take a look at the other one. Hey. What do you think about this world? When I woke up this morning, I was checking them often, and even at just 9.30, 20 minutes ago, they had not pipped. So the one on the left just pipped. It's a scary world out there, you know? All sorts of new everything for them to have to take in. So, gotta give them some time. They will be pipping like that. Could be just one day, could be two days. They come out when they're comfortable. <clears throat> you, you don't you have no idea how much I have to contain myself just to be able to talk on camera. Because I'm over overflowing, brimming over with excitement at this. Vela successfully reproduced with herself. How awesome is that? <laughs> uh, gotta say, I like that dot right there, right after the head. That is definitely going to help me easily tell them apart. Without dot, hatched first. With dot, hatched second. If these turn out to be both female, I've got the names already chosen. I say if these turn out to be both female, because I want to verify, of course, that they are. With parthenogenesis, they should be both female, right? 
Well, let's take a look at parthenogenesis and the science behind it and how sex is determined in ball pythons. Come on, let's go learn something. Okay, so my female ball python, Vela, just did parthenogenesis. She just reproduced on her own. So shouldn't that just mean that she made like clones of herself and thus shouldn't these two be female? Well, actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And there's plenty in this area that we don't really know. So let me give you a quick crash course in sex determination genetics. For humans, females are XX chromosome. Males are XY. This means the females are homozygous. Homo meaning the same. XX is the same letters. XY, the males, are hetero. Hetero meaning different. When a male and a female sexually reproduce, half of their genes go to the offspring. Half from the male, half from the female. So from the male, there's a 50% chance the male will give X, in which case the offspring is XX and female. And there's a 50% chance the male gives a Y, which makes the offspring XY, and thus 50% chance of being male. So isn't that just how it works in the reptile world? Not exactly. Many birds and reptiles instead have ZZ, homozygous, for males, and ZW, heterozygous, for females. And the truth is, from like species to species to species, if the scientific work hasn't actually been done, we don't totally know that that's exactly how they operate. Due to Vela's parthenogenesis, I found out we don't actually know this about ball pythons yet. We don't know for sure. It's assumed that they are heterozygous for the females, ZW, and homozygous for the males, ZZ. But it's not certain. But since so many reptiles are ZZ for males and ZW for females, many assume that ball pythons work this way too. Okay, now that being said, in parthenogenesis, when it comes to a ball python, let's assume the females are ZW. It's not that she's actually making exact clones of herself. Instead, it's more like she is sexually reproducing with herself. It's still asexual reproduction because it's only involving her, but she takes half of her genes, a random half, and she combines them with another random half of her genes. If she is ZW, this is where I ran into some mystery, then there's a 25% chance, one out of four times, she will contribute a Z and another Z, making ZZ and thus making male. 50% of the time, she would give a Z, and then she'd also give a W, making a female. But then we get to this weird situation where 25% of the time, she would give a W and another W. And exactly what would that be? Again, ZZ is male, ZW is female, so what's WW? I don't know. Do you see how this is getting a little bit complicated? Well, I went looking, and I found a paper on monitor lizards and their parthenogenesis and how that has worked out. And by the way, just as an aside, I love the titles of scientific papers. They are like just straightforward to the point, nothing vague. Observations on Parthenogenesis in Monitor Lizards. This was published in 2012 by the Varanid Interest Group. Now, Monitor Lizards are known to be ZZ, ZW, homo male, het female. But they talked about a type of Parthenogenesis I had no idea about. I didn't even know Parthenogenesis has different adjectives depending upon how it's done. And according to this paper, it says that during automictic parthenogenesis with terminal fusion, and those are things I don't at all understand, only two possibilities can occur. Both of the sex chromosomes originate from the female's chromosome set. And so it's kind of like you've got one set of genes for the sex, and either a Z is used and gets copied, making ZZ and thus male, or a W gets copied making WW, and again, what is that? Well, according to this paper, WW is not viable. And even if it's not viable for monitor lizards, does that mean WW is not viable if this were happening in ball pythons? I don't know. So trying to figure out more about this, I did also find another paper. This one's got a bit of a longer title. Published in 2016 from the University of Sao Paulo, a case study in sex linkage on Python regius with new insights into sex determination in Henophidia. Henophidia? Anyway, now I've given you the title of this paper and where it came from, so you're welcome to go onto the interwebs yourself and find it and give it a read. 
But the bottom line is that they feel that they've done a case study where they've been able to track the genes of heredity in some ball pythons that were bred, and that the way that the heredity worked for producing certain things in the ball pythons could only be true if females are XX and males are XY. Here's what I think it's safe to say. We don't really know how parthenogenesis works with ball pythons because it is really that rare and it has never been really properly documented. So did you get all that? Well, while I was explaining all that to you, number two came out. Let's take a look. Healthy. Two beautiful, healthy, baby ball pythons. Oh, they are stunning. They are so adorable. And don't worry about all that vermiculite that's on them. That'll come off just fine. Oh, I love your pattern. Of course, with the pattern, I don't know if we know whether or not it's genetically determined or if there's any environmental development that causes it the way it is. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, I am willing to say these two have crossed the finish line. Two healthy baby ball pythons. I can't say, you know, ten fingers, ten toes, obviously, but... Everything's on the inside where it should be. Tongues are flickering. Okay, I want to leave them alone. I don't want to stress them out. Cool. Well, there you have it, avid viewers. Parthenogenesis. Vela did it. Two cross the finish line. Success. I've been saving my last Romulan Ale energy drink <laughs> from uh, 2012. <laughs> it was a good year for it. It's the last one that I have, and I've been saving it for a special occasion. I think this is it. Mm. Those Romulans, right? They know what to do. To Vela. Parthenogenesis. Don't tell the Federation. And if you didn't get that joke, watch more Star Trek. So is this the last video? Well, they cross the finish line, but also there's some more work that has to be done. They need to get to their first shed. After about 20 days from hatching, more or less, they should have their first shed, meaning shedding their skin. And after that happens, then they'll be ready to eat. And I need to make sure then that they start feeding and doing it properly in captivity. Sometimes it can be difficult to get a snake, any snake, to feed while in captivity. You get stubborn ones sometimes. So, yeah, I'm not done being concerned about them. There's still plenty to do here. Also, after they've shed, after they've been eating for a while, it is then also possible to determine their sex by something called popping the hemifenes. I mean, you want to know what sex they are, right? Questions, comments, stuff about this that you liked, go ahead and leave it down there in the comments section below. And it's been great having you along for this journey. Mmm. This is a taste of victory. I'd give Vela some, but I don't think she likes carbonated beverages. It's so nice to be stress-free. <laughs> Baby pythons! Okay.